Jesus, 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 Jesus. As I just watch outside there, I see such a beautiful, beautiful climate, white snow. It means something beautiful, something new is about to begin in our lives or in the world as well. And indeed, it is. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Holy Redeemer Streaming Mass. My name is Father George Roger Bizogo, a Palutan priest working here in the Archdiocese in the Diocese of Lansing and pastor at Holy Redeemer. I'm so glad, glad that you are joining us for this Advent and Christmas streaming weekend's Mass. Advent indeed, as you well know, is coming, the coming. Get ready for Christ's coming as we are all part of the Advent chain. During this Advent season, we look forward to Jesus coming at Christmas. Throughout history, many people, beginning with Adam and Eve after they lost their innocence, Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, all the prophets, Zechariah and John the Baptist, just to name the few, have looked forward to Jesus coming. We now hope that this pre-mass come down opens your heart to welcome Christ in your life. To help you prepare your hearts, we share every week a life testimony from one of our parishioners or our ministries. Prepare the way for the Lord, says John the Baptist. In the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, indeed, in chapter 1, verse 9. And this is indeed the spirit of Advent. Take a moment to watch, to prepare yourself, to tag a person. Hi everyone, my name is John Mira. Um, I've been here at, uh, um, I guess like a registered parishioner here at Holy Redeemer for the past um, uh, going on four years now. I was born originally in the East Coast and uh, um, I think I was about four years old. We moved from Pennsylvania to Detroit and then lived in Detroit for a while and then moved to Clinton Township which is around Detroit area and then eventually to Grand Blanc and uh, I think it was about 13 when I moved to Grand Blanc and uh, yeah we, we were just yeah pretty devout. I just went, went to Mass every Sunday, went to you know religious ed I was pretty involved, um, especially when I started going to youth group, uh, going to mission trips, you know, going on retreats, and yeah, just yeah, you know, different things like that. Um, eventually, got involved in a lot of the music. You know, for for me, um, growing up in my faith, like I, I, you know, I wanted to to do all the the good things, but I always felt very um, kind of reserved in my faith, and also very, I don't know, I kind of I felt like a, a little double like two-faced um, at times and I mean then that's kind of like what I wanted to be is just like a, a like a good follower of Jesus but I didn't really have a relationship with him you know I think going to youth group and things like that you know kept me close to to the church and close to, to the faith and you know it kept me from I you know just kind of just saying just throwing it away but a lot of it was just kind of a social aspect of just you know making good friends um, yeah just more of like a cultural thing for me too as well I, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know as far as like a, having a relationship, you know, with, with God, having a relationship with Jesus to like to, you know, truly like personally know him, you know, like I never heard like anything like that till, you know, till like basically like college. And honestly, like there's there's parts of my life where I was like, I don't like myself, you know, just kind of a lot of like lies and shame and, and things like that, that I was kind of uh, believing about myself and, um, you know, thinking I was like not good, you know, good enough. And uh, probably my yeah sophomore year uh, in college, and I was going to Michigan State. And um, one of my uh, best friends, Taylor Petrowski, he um, invited me to join this like men's like small group. And you know, I've, I've been part part of like small groups before in retreats and things like that. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, you know, it'll be fun. You know, just uh, you know, the first few meetings were you know were were pretty good. And I just remember 
there's the one meeting that kind of just changed everything where um, we were just all like brutally honest um, with with each other stuff that we were struggling with you know whether just different like habitual sins you know things like that and um, like I said just like a lot of uh, like shame that I was kind of holding on to uh, in my life at the time and so you know to see like these guys um, being like truly honest in, in that way and it, it gave me like the courage um, and yeah just really encouraging for, for me to share just kind of things that I've been struggling with and just in that small group you know just I just felt for the I don't know for the first time like really seen like fully seen you know because I, I just felt like there's parts of my life that was like just always hiding away having like that true like I don't know like friendship building these true friendships uh, with these guys and seeing like they love me for you know for for me and uh, you know they don't see like kind of the sins I was like struggling with as like a part of it, it's, it wasn't me and uh, yeah just with these guys you know just seeing like they love me for for who I who I was and um, not not for like what I've done and also just in that too just um, you know this kind of realization of yeah if these guys you know can come and you know say that they they love me for me and, and G, uh, I just really felt like the love of Jesus. Um, through these men um, and in that same way of like Jesus loves me for for me but you know it wasn't like an overnight thing it was definitely like a, a gradual thing but there's just like a lot of freedom that I experienced just in that small group and yeah just this kind of gradual thing of like of me like really truly developing like a relationship with, with Jesus if you ask me you know 10 years even like three years ago you know um, if I would be where I'm at today um, you know I'd be like no, I couldn't believe you. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe it. And um, yeah, the, like what the Lord can do in your life if you know you allow Him to, you know, kind of come into your life. Um, yeah, like he, it, it changes everything. You can completely just, you know, change your life. Just before we begin this holy sacrifice of the Mass, and as we enter this holy season of preparation, allow me to say a short prayer for all of you who are watching now. Please bow your heads, close your eyes, put yourself in His presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your presence. Spirit of Advent, fill this time of preparation to direct our hearts and minds to Christ's second coming at the end of time and the joy of the celebration of his anniversary as he comes to us at Christmas. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us and happy festive season. Hello and welcome to Holy Redeemer as we celebrate this new season, this new season of Advent, which we prepare for our coming King. So let us prepare tonight by calling upon that Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary Come, Holy Spirit, help us to prepare for your coming. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and fill this place with your holy presence. Come, Holy Spirit. And we invite you to stand and join in worship. To you I lift up my soul, O oh my God. In you I have trusted, let me not be put to shame. Nor let my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. Jesus is God. 
by Isaiah in chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. The people who walk light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. Let us now pray for God's blessing upon us and upon this wreath. Lord our God, 
We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of all peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon this reef and upon us as we light the first candle. May the reef and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the, can, the family is going to light the candle on our behalf. Let me say the word. May we light this candle. May this candle be a sign of our hope in the midst of our darkness. May we now join, sing, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in the Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, O Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at, the, at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever, Amen. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down 
with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds, we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make us turn to you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, 
with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> may the Lord bless you and sanctify your heart so that you may proclaim the gospel with competence and dignity in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. be with you and with your spirit this is a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord jesus said to his disciples be watchful be alert you do not know when the time will come it's like a man traveling abroad he leaves home and places his servants in charge each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch watch Therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. But I say to you, watch. That is the Advent spirit, to be watchful, to be steadfast, to be waiting, to be awake, to be standing, to be ready, to be there, waiting for him. The heart of man is a heart that longs Longing, longing for fulfillment. Our hearts are longing to be fulfilled for the better. Nothing in the world can quench our thirst or our hunger. Only God. We're waiting. We're longing. Why are we waiting? Because we are longing for something that we do not have. Something that human beings cannot do. Something that the world cannot do. Something that nobody, not even your father, not even your mother, not even your brother, not even your spouse can do for you. That's why we are longing. When you go to a restaurant during the time of Thanksgiving, we so long for that day, for the Thanksgiving to come. We will meet with our siblings. We will meet with our people that we haven't met for a long time. Then we met with them. We were happy, but we were not fulfilled. Amen. But we're still longing for something better. The people of Israel today in the book of Isaiah, they are the ones who are crying. They are longing. They are in the midst of crisis, in the midst of desperation. 
They know they have sinned. They even know God is angry with them. And this is the first time God will be called Father, Abba. This is the very first time. They will call for God. They will cry. They cry, O oh Lord, tear the heaven and come down. Come down. We need you desperately. We need you in our lives. We need you to come and fulfill the home. We need you to come and bring the peace that we need, that we need in order to be good people, in order to be really, to realize the true humanity in us. Come, Lord. That's the longing for the, for the children of Israel. Because the people of Israel, they knew it, that even in the midst of affliction, that's where God's grace is all the more powerful. And that God has always come to their rescue. When they were in slavery in Egypt, the Lord came and he saved them. They went to the exile, the Lord came and he saved them. God is always there to rescue them. They have that experience of God who is faithful. A faithful God. We are longing. We are waiting. But the problem with us sometimes is that we don't want God to come into our lives. The children of Israel, at least they are crying for God to come in the midst of their desperation. But most of the time, we don't want God in our lives because he's disturbing us. We don't want him. He will challenge us. We don't want God, the God who challenges our little freedom. We don't want the God who takes our space. We don't want God. We don't want him. He is going to ask us to do something that we would not like to do. That's a challenge. As we stand here today, as we begin this new period, this is a time each and every one needs to ask himself, am I ready to cleanse my heart and to allow him to be master in my heart? Am I ready to welcome the new child Jesus, the newborn Jesus in my life? Yes. The expectation is not just about Christmas, but it's also about where are we going to be, the final judgment, the final day, when he's going to come as a judge. How will I stand? Will I stand confidently with trust? As the letter to the Hebrews reminds us in chapter, in chapter 4, Verse 14, that we will approach the throne of grace with confidence. Brothers and sisters, we, all, we also need to understand that we are to prepare our hearts to welcome Jesus, even in the Eucharist. That's why to come to Mass does not surprise us. It shall not become a surprise. We need to prepare our hearts in order to come and meet with Christ in the Eucharist. Three important coming of Jesus in our lives. He comes in the flesh at Bethlehem. He is born, bringing new life, bringing new hope, bringing new expectations. He comes also in the Eucharist every day when we break the bread when we, we preach the word we prepare our hearts for the real goal that is receiving him at his table he wants to be with us he wants to feed us he wants to nourish us he wants to change us he wants to transform us that is the word transform transubstantiation. That's happened when the Eucharist is celebrated. The blessing over the bread and wine brings transubstantiation. The change of bread 
into the real presence of Christ, his body and his blood, and we truly meet with him. Do we prepare ourselves when we come to Mass to receive him, to be one with him, and to emulate him, his attitude, his love, his forgiveness, his joy in the world. Yes, the gospel of today is also bringing us to the second coming. Like every first Sunday of Advent, we focus in the, on the second coming of Christ. It brings the expectation of the Lord when he comes again, as we are going to profess it in the Eucharist, in, during the anamnesis. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and we profess your resurrection until you come again. And this is the longing. Until he come again, will he find me ready? Will he find me ready? And how do I prepare myself? Yes, he is coming. He's coming to comfort me. He's coming to guide. He's coming to heal. He's coming to restore the, us from the fear. He's coming in this world whereby we are normally exactly wounded. Of course, he comes. He comes to us to bring joy and peace. Yes. In the world where we are in need of so much good relationship, better relationship, he comes to say, I'm the true friend. I will never disappoint you. He comes to reassure us of life that will not end, of eternity. Even in the midst of our afflictions, that's where he comes. In the midst of crisis, God's grace enters humanity. It is because of sin that God had to come into humanity. The crisis is a place of the birthplace, is a birthplace of God's grace. When you are sick, when you are feeling you are, you are facing difficulties and hardship, remember, Jesus is coming. Don't be despair. When you feel like you have been abandoned, remember, Jesus is coming to be your companion. When in life, there is all kinds of desperation. Remember, Jesus is coming. You are weak. Remember, it is in your weakness that he walks all the more. Paul will say, when I am weak, that is when I am strong. The people... The Christians in the second, in the second reading today of today, we read from the letter to the Corinthians. These Christians, they are an example to us. They are waiting for Christ, but they, are, they have been enriched with all gifts, spiritual gifts, knowledge, prophecy, speaking in tongues, gifts of prayer, so that they can wait for the coming of Christ. We too have been endowed with all kind of giftedness. The talents that God has given us, they are for us to make use of them so that we may wait for him when he comes again. I would like to reassure you that this Sunday is a Sunday of hope. The candle of hope has been lit so that 
we may be children of hope in the midst of darkness. We may light the candle of, the candle of hope in the midst of darkness. We may light a candle of hope where even abortion seems to cry, but we may light a candle to cry out life and life and life in abundance. We are lighting the candle of hope so that we may become signs of hope there among the people who have lost all kinds of hope. Among the people who say there is no God, let us go outside with, with hope and determination and tell them our God is alive. And he is coming back. We are people of hope. Without hope, there is no life. And the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is hope. And the hope will never deceive us. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Dear brothers and sisters, in the beginning of this period, seasons of Advent, few advice for you. First thing, tell Jesus, I am not worthy to receive you like the centurion in the Bible. And like each and every Sunday we say that, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. What shall we do? We need cleansing. We need to cleanse ourselves. We need to wash ourselves. And it doesn't mean that you are dirty physically. It simply means, like the people, children of Israel, you realize that even when you sin and God is now much more in love with you, he wants you to go to, the, to confession. The sacraments of confession is there. Every Saturday, 11 to 12, we have confessions here at Holy Redeemer. Every Wednesday, from 4 to 6, we have confessions here at Holy Redeemer. Every first Friday at the encounter, we have confessions here at Holy Redeemer in the evening from 6 to at least 7 or to 7.30. These are the opportunities. And again, during this season, on the 14, we are going to have again confessions here from 5 at least till 7. Open doors, starting with adoration and examination of conscience. Let's come to him. Cleanse ourselves. Let's work on our relationship with one another. Advent is also a kind of sacrificial and penitential moment. That's why we wear the purple. Time of prayer, time of penance, time of sacrifice. It's also a time of mercy. We need to be merciful to share the love of Christ with one another, especially those who are most in need of our help. I pray with you this Sunday that the Lord may give us strength and courage to walk on this journey. We are not alone. May he give us the same spirit that he gave to the people of Corinth so that we too, endowed with the gifts of prayer, endowed with the Holy Spirit, we may walk each and every day to reach the eternal kingdom in heaven, where he lives forever and ever. Amen.
May we please rise to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men for salvation, he came down from heaven, and the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified, and upon his pilot he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hope and confidence, dear friends in the Lord, let us turn to the God of hope with our prayers. We pray for all bishops. May the voice of Christ always be their guide in their stewardship of his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those entrusted with political responsibility and leadership. May Christ grant them prudence to work always for what is good and keep them mindful of the ways of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel anxiety or despair. May the Holy Spirit help them in recognizing God as the reason for their hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us gathered here on this first Sunday of Advent. May God enkindle in our hearts the fire of his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our deceased friends and relatives. May they find peace and rest in eternal union with our merciful Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our masses this weekend are offered for the repose of the soul of Joanne Garrett, the repose of the soul of Jim McGurk, the living and deceased members of the Council of Catholic Women, and our mass this evening for the repose of the soul of Carol Hackney. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just a few minutes for yourself to connect with the God of hope. In the beginning of this season of Advent, I'm inviting you to connect with Jesus, who has spoken to us through his word. Present him these seasons, your wish. What would you like him to do for you? How would you like to welcome him Like the children of Israel today, we cry, Lord. Our prayer is a cry to you. Lord, come down to us. Come to those hearts that are desperately in need of you. Come to those hearts that are wounded. Come to those hearts that have been desperate with so many disappointments in their relationships, in their marriages. Come, Lord. Come with your power and your grace to heal whatever that is sick in us. Cancel the depth of our sins that way in us. Strengthen our faith in this time 
of desperation, unbelief, and all kinds of trials that we go through. Father, let your son come down. As you said, you're sending him to relieve and to redeem the world. Let him redeem those who are enslaved with the powers and in chains with the powers of this world, with the riches of this world, with the materialism. Break all those chains, Lord, and help us to serve you with sincerity and faith. Come, Jesus. Redirect the hearts of the children to our loving Father. Bring back families that have been divided in this season of grace that husband and wife may live in true heart harmony in the spirit of hope, expecting your coming with their children, Lord, in one beautiful and loving family. Lord, come in whatever sphere of, life, or sphere of our life where we really need you. We need you. We need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. Tear down the heavens and come to our parish here at Holy Redeemer. To those who are watching us on the streams, those who are watching, those who are in the homes, Lord, may your words go through to them. Heal us. Heal our brokenness. Come with your peace in the land. Come with your peace in the world. Come with your help for desperate children, desperate families, those who go hungry every day. Come, Lord. Thank you for coming into our lives, into our parish, into our families, into our country. We make this prayer through the intercession of Mary, our mother, who waited with hope and expectation. And through Christ, who is our Savior and Redeemer, amen.
Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Accept. We pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may, in er may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and child's salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Vincent Palauti, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honors is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. I waited for you. <laughs> God, you take away the sins of the world. Be saved in no peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Be saved in no peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world don't know peace but don't know peace but behold Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb
Together we take up the Anima Christi prayer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, embolden me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O God Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Never permit me to be parted from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you for age upon age. Amen.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Are there any wedding anniversaries being celebrated this week? Yes. <laughs> Just you guys. How many years? 31. 31 years. <laughs> so let's give them our blessing. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and you made woman so that they might enter a communion of life and of love. You likewise bless the union of this couple, so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace, so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. How about birthdays? Any birthdays this week? No. Every week's his birthday. Okay, so we have one right here. Two. Okay, I see her. She's not looking up, though. There she goes. All right, let's give them our blessing. Loving God, we ask you to bless each person celebrating the gift of life this week. As they mark their birthdays, fill them with special memories, special joys, and special blessings. May they enjoy many years, all of them pleasing to you. Surround them with your presence and gift them with your great love. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. The rest of our announcements will be on the screen. And it really picks up next weekend. Families are invited to breakfast with Santa at the Family Life Center. It's next Saturday, December 9th, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. So enjoy some yummy pancakes and share your wishes for the Christmas season. And if you're interested in going, please fill out the form on our parish website, or you can fill out this green form that's at the welcome desk and turn it into the office by Tuesday, December 5th. Not much time, so you better get on it. Also happening next weekend, a sweet Christmas tradition. It's the Council of Catholic Women's Cookie Walk. Head to the Ministry Center after Mass on December 9th and 10th to grab a box and mix and match your favorite flavors and don't give any to Deacon Ken. But wait a minute. Somebody's got to save me some. And it's time for one of the most exciting events we have all year here at Holy Redeemer, our annual Christmas concert is just a few days away. Our music ministry team <laughs> is putting together such a special couple of nights for us all. Here's a special message from them on what you can expect. Hi, we're the Czechs, and we're here to invite you to this year's Holy Redeemer Christmas concert, December 8th and 9th. You know, every year that Holy Redeemer has had its Christmas concert, our family's been part of it in some way, and we just love this tradition. My favorite thing is singing in the kids' choir. 
And I really love playing with all the excellent local musicians. And the chamber choir music is just so beautiful. And don't forget the cookies. <laughs> and that's just a few moments in the show. So please come join us and see for yourself. So December 8th and 9th, 7 p.m., Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. Hope, Hope to, to see, see you there. there. It looks like a blast. Yeah, it sure does. Holy Redeemer will be the hottest ticket in town Friday and Saturday, that's for sure. One last Hello reminder before weekend. we go, this coming Friday is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, which is a holy day of obligation for us Catholics. Immaculate Conception Masses are at 8.30 and 5 p.m. on Friday. You can also grab a bulletin to see Mass times at other parishes nearby if you can't make those times. We sure have a big weekend coming up and I'm almost tired already, so we'll see you all there. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Let us receive the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your head for the blessing. Be almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have been placed, who have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming again, I sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, May he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing with devotion, at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich rewards of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen, and may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Let us go to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Let your kingdom come here, let your will be done here in us. Jesus, there is no one greater, you alone are saved.
drums are safe in your mighty name, King of heaven, come.